Hey fellow heroes, and welcome to that time again where we cover Endgame and Grandmaster builds for this season. It's that time again where Grandmasters have just been released, and many players will be wanting to find a new build that they can try or use to complete these new challenges. As so 3.0 has offered us many new things to try, I thought I'll try and show you some builds that can be viable for these new content, and one build I'm going to show you is going to allow you to outheal heavy damage chugged at you. It's a great build for solo or group players who aren't too mobile and struggle with playing certain playstyles. Using the classy restoration, the stack, and still a 3.0, I'm going to show you how you can survive multiple hits and GMs without dying so much and make you a pro at doing these activities. But you know what else makes you a pro in Destiny? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn your notifications as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using Well of Radiant to fully complement the endgame build for team and solo play. We have covered the stack before in the past and how powerful it can be with the right components. With Stasis for example, you could build a purely defensive setup that would allow you to survive certain one-shot attacks from combatants, such as a Unstoppable. As the focus has now changed to solo, a few things have been changed as well. Well of Radiance doesn't give you overshield anymore, but still does give you health regen and damage increasement. Because of this, the stack build does lose out a very important feature to making it more tanky, but it can still work nonetheless. For example, I have Touch of Flame that allows our grenades to have added effects to them, and Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide, and will grab mini energy back while in the air. For Fragments, you'll want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more scorched to targets, Ember of Torches where power mini hits against combatants make you near allies radiant, Ember of Elephant, where granting healing to others will grant you a grenade, melee and class ability regen back, and Ember of Sindering, where scorching targets grant class ability energy back. For stats, you want 60 to 100 resilience, 80 to 100 recovery, and 50 in discipline, and 60 in strength. The most common skill you'll want to make use of is your melee with incinerated snap, so you can get your ribs up relatively quickly, and buffs doing so as well. You may not get 100 in all stats, so you can just work with what is shown, and then make sure to have abilities or perks to improve on them some more. So key mods I have here are Powerful Wealth plus 2 in worlds created, Midi Wellmaker for creating worlds with your Midi, Font of Wisdom for a plus 50 in intellect regen, World of Life for increased health regen over time, and Classy Restoration for increased health regen for a few seconds. Using the stack's ability to take damage and grant energy back to you, the plan here is to always be the meat shield of the party, so you can use and abuse that free class ability energy you get back and keep doing so until you get cocky and killed in the process, or until you have to move on to the next area, and it does work relatively well as long as you remember how long your riff is active for and classy restoration stands for. You can pretty much spam this with no downsides, except for lack of class energy when you use too much, but that can be easily overcome. You can pretty much spam this with no downside, except for lack of class energy when you use too much, but that can be easily overcome. Remember, there are things you can swap out if you don't agree with some of the choices I have, but I do try my best to explain why I'm doing this method instead of another, as it's always smart to give a different view of the situation. So from here, you then want to invest into weaponry, which would be suitable for the content you're in. This is really down to you, since GMs and endgames can vary with weapons. My primary is the Servant Leader Scout Rifle with 4 times the charm and multi kill clip, a great weapon and more to get, which can be very handy for picking off targets fast with its full auto design, and using the 4 times the charm perk can be handy against bosses for increased damage over a certain time frame. It does lack range, which might be a problem for some, but it's not all that bad I've noticed. If this isn't good enough, then the Deliverance with Bait and Switch is a very handy weapon to use as you will always have Radiant active most of the time, and that extra damage being pulled off can be on par with whatever heavy you're using. Next I have the Insidious Pulse Rifle with Demolitionist and Adaptive Munitions, both being enhanced. If you ever do the raid, then this should be the reason why you do it, as this Pulse and this Perks are very good for all types of end game you play in. With Adaptive Munitions, it will allow me to take on Elemental Shields of all type, without the need of using certain Elemental Weapons to break them down, or use Arbalest. Demon now will give us energy back for grenades, which will always be helpful no matter how you look at it. With the two combined, you can get a powerful pulse that hits hard, has great distance, but also can be farmed if you do the raid a number of times. For Heavy, add the Red Hand Rocket Launcher for tracking a Frenzy, both being enhanced. Although the build is solar based, 
We won't be using much solo around it since it requires weapons with certain perks to make it work out. We also aren't using Font of Might since creating bars won't always be on the table. With this thought in mind, I found that using weapons with explosive light or using a weapon that can reduce the outgoing damage will yield more effects than whatever is offered, as long as it will be impactful. The Red Heron for example can have certain perks to make it overall effective at damage, and my role for example makes it easier to aim and gets a nice 20% damage boost for being active in combat. It also has Psycho Hack which reduces damage by combatants by an extra 10% for around 3 seconds which is low, but can still be a lifesaver in some situations. If that's not your thing, then the Cataclysmic with Bane Switch is another role to aim for. For the stats, we need to focus on having high recovery and resilience if possible, so that any incoming damage can be negated with ease. Now, trying to achieve a 100 in both stats is kind of hard if you don't have the armor to do so, so don't fret so much over the idea. Instead, focus on getting one stat to 100, such as recovery, which is the easiest to achieve on a Warlock. Although I don't have 100, you don't need to fully reach it as long as you have perks and monsters that will help you out along the way. The Stag for example will give you around a 50% recovery energy back when you reach critical health, and then Ember of Syndrome will grant energy back as well as long as you score to target. We also have Utility Kickstart mod which will give us some energy the moment we are out of lift energy, so all of these in the hand will be enough to keep you fully retained and getting your wrist back in seconds. 80 to 100 makes no difference, just make sure you have what is shown and you should honestly be good. Discipline and strength can both stay at around 50 to 60, as though we play a big part in how our abilities work, but not 100% of the time to the point that we will be using them more than our weapons. I think the main points of stats here have already been covered thoroughly, and it's kind of obvious to what you need to do. As long as your recovery and resilience are relatively high, the rest of the stats can be invested however you like, as they can be enhanced via mods and perks alone. Leftover wise, we have Kinetic Cypher, where rapid kills can produce orbs of power. Inquenchable Thirst, where it will improve Soul Drinker's perk to grant more health back to you, and Rocket Launcher Scavenger for more rocket reserves. Now, here's the list breaking it all down. For Head, we have Discipline, Inquenchable Thirst, Kinetic Cypher, and Battle for Well mods. Arm, we have Discipline, and Melee Wallmaker mod. Chest we have Resilience, Arm of the Dying Sun, Curse of Dapna and Front of Wisdom mod. Leg we have Resilience, Rock Alonso Scavenger mod and World of Life mod. Bond we have Resilience, Utility Kickstart and Classy Restoration mod. So let's look into the pros and cons of such a build in the end game. The pros of the build is that if you like feeling invincible and like to have a giga health regen at your disposal, then this build will serve you well. Non-stop healing and damage resistance times 2 on top of the healing makes taking on damage of all type fairly easy and survivable no matter the level of the content. You can be 10 levels below the recommended and still do fairly well against the disadvantage you're at. This is great when you think about some of the endgame content available and how most of them require you to rank up first if you want to do them. With this build you can avoid that and do them as you please, although you will get killed fairly quickly if you play stupidly. Considering how fast you can get your rifts up as shown, you can put down multiple rifts at once as long as you're able to prop the right things to do so. Using this in mass or GMs for example could prove to make it useful when you and your team are hunkering down in the area and need to stay alive as much as possible. It's quite simple and straight to the point for those who die too much or just want to learn how certain mechanics work and I can see this being favourable to newer players who get most of the gear shown. However, the cons to build is that it doesn't make you invincible and I'm glad for that part of the title. You can take a lot of damage, but depending on the damage being done, it could be enough to outdo your damage resistance and healing at the same time. This can be a problem in some instances where you want to utilize this exotic trait and messing up in the process. If you're behind cover, then that's not really a big issue, but if there's no cover available, then you're going to be in a rough spot afterwards. It's kind of tough to measure the build in some content as if you commit to its design, you'll be able to outlast everything that's facing you but overcommitting can lead to disastrous results. However you see it, the build can do wonders with eating damage constantly with no breaks involved. You can customize it and not lose too much from it and it will still stay faithful for you as long as you want. But the downside to this is that you're not invincible and it only takes one vein length to end it all, something we have all tragically experienced. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.